QuickBooks Online 2024 Bill Forms. Enter, sort, and pay bill forms. Get ready and some coffee because we're getting the business on target with QuickBooks Online 2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Dick Gray Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. We're going to be opening up those major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports on the left in the favorites. We're right-clicking on that balance sheet and opening in a new tab. Right-clicking on the profit and loss to open in a new tab. Right-clicking on the trustee trial balance to open in a new tab. Tabbing to the right, closing the hamburger, changing the range. We're going from 010124 tab, 02824 tab. I'd like to see it on a month by month on the side by side, and then we will run it. Let's tab to the right, repeat the process. Hamburger, close it. Changing the ranging, 010124 tab, 022824 tab, month by month breakout, and then run it to refresh it again one more time to the right. Burger needs to be closed, and then we'll change the range, 010124 tab, 022824 tab. We will put it on a month by month, side by side, running it to refresh it. Let's go back to the balance sheet to discuss the next process. We're going to be imagining we enter the normal bills as of the end of the month. Bills in this terminology being used as more of a layman's type of terms, meaning we're getting bills from the normal monthly cycle, such as the telephone bill, the utility bill, and so on and so forth. Obviously, these days, more often, we might be getting those bills electronically rather than in a paper version, and we might be paying them off with the help and the use of, of the bank feeds. However, we also might be putting them in place in terms of a bill in the system so that we can better sort our bills, that being more likely of a process if we're a larger type of company. So last month, what we did in the first month of operations is more of a cash-based type of system, paying off the bills, not with a bill form, but rather a check form, which is similar to an expense form. As they become due this time, we're going to enter them as a bill form, which will increase the accounts payable and then pay them off. Let's look at a flow chart just to get a reminder of how this process works. This is a desktop flow chart that we're working using for online purposes because the flow is basically the same for any kind of accounting system. Remember that you can kind of think of each of the cycles as whether they're on a cash basis or accrual based system. In other words, oftentimes when you hear cash or accrual based systems, people think of the entire bookkeeping system as being on one or the other. But really, you can kind of break it down to each of the cycles, meaning is the vendor cycle in particular on a cash based or accrual based system versus the customer or revenue cycle. Often, it will be the case that the revenue cycle will be driven by the type of industry you're in as to whether you're going to be doing accrual type of things or having accrual type accounts, such as law firms being required to invoice and then track accounts receivable and accounts receivable is an accrual account. Same thing on the vendor uh, side of things. We're paying things out of the business. Oftentimes, the thing that puts us from a cash-based system to an accrual-based system will be the, the, how big the company is and possibly whether or not we track inventory could complicate things as well. But small companies, when you pay just your normal bills, like the telephone or utility bill, might just say, hey, look, I'm just going to wait till that, to, that clears the bank and then use the bank feeds to do an electronic uh, type of transfer in order to record the transaction. 
that's the easiest thing to do and it often works quite well with the outflow on the bill side of things and once you manage your bank feeds you can kind of repeat that process to make it nice simple and easy we'll talk more about the bank feeds in future presentations in a future course or section on how to set those rules up but the forms will be in essence the same when you use a bank feed form to pay a bill you're going to be using an expense type of form generally now if you get to a larger type of business however oftentimes then you have to do the accrual type of thing entering the bills as actual bills into the system increasing accounts payable instead of just paying them as you get the bill why because if you have a small transaction meaning if i got a telephone bill for like 70 dollars today and i can pay it today or 15 days from today i might as well pay it today because i just want to get it out of the way when it comes in uh i'm just going to pay it i might set up electronic payments to pay it as soon as i can basically just to just to get it done uh, but when you're a larger business it becomes much more important because you're dealing with larger dollar amount transactions therefore that 15 days could have a cash management impact if it was a large like ten thousand dollar bill instead of a 75 dollar bill and the number of transactions are often a lot larger as well and therefore if you're doing thousands of 75 dollar transactions then it becomes important if you talk to a credit card company or something like that they care about how how close they're going to be paying if they can uh, push something out an extra day or get their money a day faster it's going to be worth it if they can apply that to all of their transactions right because they have so many of them so that's going to be the idea if you work at a larger business you're probably going to be entering the bills more likely and then spending a lot of times in a whole accounts payable uh, sector of the business trying to pay the bills as late as possible while not pissing off the vendors and taking advantage of any kind of cash discounts that may be offered that's the general job there so quick recap remembering that the bills from and the invoices from normal terminology standpoint are kind of interchangeable because if i say i got the bill from the telephone company i could say i got billed but i can also say i got invoiced from the telephone company the bill that we get from the telephone company might say invoice on it because if they were using quickbooks they would be invoicing their customer from their side of things and from our side of things we would be getting billed by the client now when we get the bill either electronically or paper format of a bill that doesn't mean it's a bill for quickbooks's purposes because i might not enter a bill even though i got a physical paper bill because i might pay the bill off with a check form if i pay the bill off with a check form or expense form then i didn't actually enter a bill form into quickbooks the bill form for quickbooks means specifically that accounts payable is going to be going up that's what the bill form does so that's what we'll do this time we'll enter all the bills and then we'll basically pay them kind of at one time sorting the bills and paying them out to see how that works all right let's go to the first tab and just run through it we're going to hit the plus button and instead of just paying we got a bill we're imagining we've got these bills instead of just expensing them or waiting until they clear the bank to use an expense form we're going to enter a bill form increasing the accounts payable and then sorting the bills and paying them uh, as we do this so I'm going to say this is for Verizon you'll recall we had Verizon before but we used a check form or ex yeah check form to pay it so if we used the same form then we would have the uh, the categories would populate automatically down here so in other words let me just show you that if I close this out and I go to new if we were to use a check form we're not going to enter it but I was to say Verizon boom boom then it may categorize the, oh there it goes the telephone bill down below and try to memorize the transaction that's because that's the default settings that are set up and that's usually good because it helps us to be consistent with assigning to the same account although the dollar amount will still will typically need to be changed but I'm going to close this out and not record it because we're using a bill form it's not memorizing the transactions just want to point out that usually in the second month of operations things become easier because it does normally memorize at least the account that it's going to which helps us to be consistent so we're going to say Verizon 
Verizon is our telephone company. We're going to be paying it as of 0220, uh, let's say 022824. Now the due date might be, uh, you can put the terms here for like net 15 or something like that. But oftentimes the terms are not going to be as useful because you're not the one setting the terms. The terms have been set by the vendor typically. And so you're probably going to have to manually put in place the due date, the due date being important if you're going to sort by due date and try to pay at the last possible time without getting hit with a penalty or something like that. So I'm going to tab, 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 tab. And then we're going to say it's going to go to the telephone expense telephone the expenses have been set up basically now because we're in the second month of operations things should be getting easier we're going to say it's for 360 i'm not going to make it billable we're not going to be charging an invoice uh, for it so i'm not going to be using these ones noting also that if it was inventory that we purchased we might use a bill to do that if it was inventory we would have the items and be using the items What's this going to do when we, well, let's just look at the rest of it. We can, we can cancel, we can clear, we can make it reoccurring. We can save, we can save and close, save and new and save and schedule a payment. If you have the checking account capacity to schedule payments, which you could set up if you wanted to. But anyways, I won't get into that. That's the idea. What's this going to do? Accounts, it's a bill. Therefore, accounts payable is going to go up. That's what the bill form does in QuickBooks. Where's the other side going to go? to the expense, telephone expense. We're gonna expense it even though we haven't yet paid it because we're using an accrual account of accounts payable, not a cash-based thing. Let's save it and close it. Stop babbling, just do it, man. You talk too much. Tap into the right, okay, we're, we're doing. I'm a man of few words, just straight action, as you can tell. We're gonna go down here and say, boom, let's do it. Let's go into that thing and see what happened. So then, We've got the 360. If I go into the 360, we can see that we have the bill. Boom. Closing that out, back to the uh, balance sheet. If we go to the income statement and run it, we can see, of course, we have the telephone for the second month, the 360. Now, if we go internally, go into the bill internally, and manage the vendors now it becomes more important the vendor center becomes more important because now i have to sort and pay the bill so under the expenses i could sort it this way with our bills and filter the bills by the open bills possibly and there's our open bills as of now i can most likely will do that in the bill section where we have the unpaid bills versus the paid bills there's our bill again we can sort it here and we can go to the uh vendors and remembering that vendors is a specific term for quickbooks as well open bills it means people that we're ultimately going to pay for goods and service provided to us although on a broader sense we are vendors because we sell guitars right we sell things therefore we're we're a guitar vendor but for quickbooks you have to see which side of the table we're, we are on but in any case that's the verizon bill boom and we can see the bill and we can then uh, pay it, which we will do shortly. But let's enter some more bills first. You're just a talker, man. I hate talkers. Always babbling around. Okay, whatever. I'm going to hit the, <laughs> let's do another one. Let's hit the plus button and let's hit, we're going on the vendor. We're going to enter another bill. Accounts payable is going to go up again. So we're going to go, this is going to be uh, Spectrum. We're going to imagine. So this is a new vendor. We haven't seen Spectrum before. We're going to imagine they set up our inter our interwebs for the business. It's going to be important. Everything's done on the interwebs. Probably don't need much more information than the vendor information because I just need to bill them. Therefore, just the name should do. I'm going to say, okay, that's all I need. It's all I want to know. Where do I send the bill to keep them? So we're going to have to choose a category now because I can't I can't see what I did last time. So I'm gonna do my normal thing. We're gonna say, okay, does QuickBooks have a category for me already? Uh, I'm gonna say internet maybe, uh, interest, interest earned. It has internet and TV service as a, as a sub account. So let's choose that one. I might say, maybe I don't like that one particularly because I don't like the idea of having TV on it because that doesn't sound very business related. I want it to be a business type of account and maybe I don't want it as a subcategory of utilities 
Because remember, utilities used to include things like the telephone, the TV, uh, and whatnot. But now the telephone's becoming so important, you kind of break it out in and of itself. Same with the internet, probably. These days, you probably break it out in and of itself as a fairly significant cost that you might not want under under utilities. At least that's how I see it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to change that. I'm going to make it 180. So I'm first going to record it, but then I'm going to go in here and change that account to make it more the way I want it to be. So I'm not going to add another account that is called internet without the TV and not under utilities. Why? Because if I did that, it's likely that I'll start recording to both of those accounts and then I'll, that, that'll be ugly. Then I'll have two accounts recording the same stuff to it. All right, so this is a bill. What's it going to do? Increase the accounts payable. The other side is going to go into this internet and TV and then I'm going to adjust that account. So let's save it and close it. If I go into the balance sheet and we run it, running just like Forrest Gump, I could run like the wind blows. You may not think so, but I'll tell you what Janae told me to. That's why I'll tap to the right and then we're going to say, so then down here, we've got under utilities, we've got this 180. I want to break it out out of under utilities and just have an account called internet and not call it internet and TV. So let's go to the first tab and find, open up the ham boogie. We're gonna go down to the transactions to do this in the chart of the accounts. And let's find that utilities thing. Gonna fix this. This ain't, this is not the way it should be. So it's gonna be way down here. It's gonna be in the next page. Don't day for crying out loud is stop. We're, okay, here's the one. I'm just going to make it, I'm going to edit this one, dropping it down, edit. And then I'm going to say that I don't want it a subcategory. So I'm going to remove the subcategorization and just put it right under normal expenses. Uh, that's the tax form here. This is where I want to be. I want to put it right under just normal expenses. This the internet is subordinate subordinate to no one okay so then this was going to be what did i what do i want to put the subcategory all right and then i'm going to change the name to internet i'll just call it internet it, it feels like it needs an expense to me although that's kind of redundant but see it just sounds better internet expenses it's just internet i don't know some people will say that's redundant like railroad tracks we already know that the railroad are tracks but I feel like it just sounds better that way. So I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go to the income statement. And we're going to say there they are. Uh, the utilities. And then the internet expense is down here. No, that's interest. Where, oh, where did they put my expense? Oh, there it is. I see it. There, it's right there. Boom. What are you, blind, man? Are you blind? Kind of, not totally yet, but it's, it's definitely fading. Okay, all right, let's do another one. Let's go to the first tab once again and hit the ham boogie. I'm gonna say that we want another bill form, another ultra vase, another time. This is gonna be Edison. We've seen Edison before. That's a repeat vendor, repeat vendor defender. So we're gonna say that's gonna be a 15 let's say 228 so the due date we would want to take from the actual bill but we're just going to give it the 15 day for this one and if we were entering a check form because we've seen edison before it would populate the category automatically but we're going to put it under utilities so to me the you the utilities has been trimmed down to like the gas electric and maybe like trash because those are usually somewhat minor costs that still kind of fit under utilities. I don't feel like I really need to break out the maybe the electric versus the gas. I can still kind of group them together in one account. And I don't really need a parent subsidiary relationship. In my, case, in my thinking, I just put them both into utilities. But the telephone seems to me isn't even a subsidiary anymore in my mind of the utilities like it was when when I was like growing up because the telephone was you know you had to actually pick up the phone you didn't even have an answering machine and stuff 
So that me and so the phone bill was kind of like part of the utilities, but now the phone is like its own thing. You know, it's like it's gonna the phone is gonna be it's like bigger than you are really or something. So I break it out. Same with the internet. Seems to me it's not like it's a phone line anymore. It should it, ha it should be in its own spot. So 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 I feel like QuickBooks default accounts are living in the past, man. Any case. The bill is going to be increased in the accounts payable. The other one's going to go right into the utilities. Let's save it and close it. Check that one out. We're going to go to the balance sheet and we'll say what's happening there, yo, on the balance sheet. Why did you say yo? What do you mean? Why did I say yo, yo? I've we're going into the this one. This is going to be the Edison. So there we have it, Edison. Then we're going to go back and then on the income statement and we have then utilities. Boom. All right, let's go back. Now we're now we're, let's go to the internal side of things. So if I if I uh, go into my expenses, the vendor center. So now we can sort our bills. We can do it in the expense area. So there's our open bills. So we can sort them by the categories. We can filter them by date and, and so on in the payee. If we so choose, we're probably more likely to do that in the bills area because that gives us a whole section for bills, unpaid versus the paid. If we want to sort the bills by anything other than simply the vendors, if we want to look at the bills by vendor, then we can go into the vendor center here and we can sort un, uh, open bills. And that gives us actually the list of vendors that have unbilled paid bills within them. Some of the vendors possibly could have, in theory, multiple bills that are unpaid within them. So now, of course, we would want to sort the bills, which again, most likely would be done like in the bills area. And you try to be paying off the bills, most likely sorting by the due date to see when they're due and trying to pay them basically as late as possible is the general theory. Uh, also just realize if I go to the balance sheet here and we go into the uh, accounts payable, this 4,548 has a sub ledger now similar to the accounts receivable account because we need to break this information out, not simply by date of transaction as is seen in the transaction detail report, but rather by who we owe the money to by vendor. So we could see that, let's just open up that report, tabbing to the right, right clicking on it, duplicating the tab so we can open up a new report to see the sub ledge. And then we're gonna go down to the reports and all the sub ledges that uh, are tied to the AP accounts payable are typically in the who you owe or what you owe section. So the classic just sub ledger, just listing out the vendor balance and the detail, vendor balance detail. I'm gonna right click and open that. Actually, I just, I should have just opened. I'll just close this, I don't need it anymore. And then I'm closing the hand buggy. And then, so, so now we see Edison has the bill, vendor, blah, blah, and so on. And we could see the point is that the total here, now broken out by vendor, four, five, four, eight, should tie out to what's on the balance sheet, four, five, four, eight, Obviously, in practice, however, we're not going to be running the reports so much as working internally to sort our bills this way, which is basically a report because they actually give us the total down here, which is night, nice, which should tie out to what's on our balance sheet. But it's just important to note that this is backing up or supporting the accounts payable on the balance sheet. So then we can, we can schedule a payment and so on, but the next step would typically be that we can go to the forms and we entered a bill. The next step is to pay bill. Noting the pay bill form is another kind of check form, as is the expense form. It's a form that decreases the checking account. Check form, expense form, pay bill form, they all are like check forms decreasing the checking account. However, the pay bill form is more specific in that we know the other side is going to go to accounts payable. That's what the pay bill form does. That's what the pay bill form means. Accounts payable is going down, other side going into typically the checking account. So checking account going up, we're gonna do this as of 02-28-24. Uh, that's an invalid date. Poor K. Okay, they won't let me pay bills in the future. So that's kind of annoying. 
So for you, you would want to have it. I'm going to try to change the transactions once I record them. This is just one of the issues with trying to uh, do things uh, in in a practice problem because the date becomes an issue. So if I if I do anything past the current date, oh, they they let me do that. Let me see, two twenty nine. There we go. They let me do it. I don't know what I was doing. There's twenty nine days uh, in. 2024 it's a leap year is that what's happening so okay i'll keep it on the 28th though that's good to know we'll we'll keep that in mind when we get to the uh when we get to the uh, to the adjusting entries all right so we're good to go now this is the check number so if there were checks that we were going to be using either through the printer in which case we would have to have the physical pre checks that we put into the printer and print them. And then we could print them later and, and have them all printed at the same time. Or we might write physical checks, in which case we would write the checks and still be populating the check numbers. If they're not check numbers and you're paying electronically, then you can remove the check numbers so that it, will be, it won't be taking up a check form. And that's so that you could do that method. All right, so then down here we can sort by payee and so on typically we, we would be sorting by the due date to see which ones we want to pay notice this pay bill form is different than other forms because when i go into it it has multiple transactions you know within it because we're gonna have multiple bills that we can sort if we select the bills more than one bill it's going to create in essence a check form or an expense form for each one of them so it's actually going to create multiple pay bill forms if I select more than one. I'm going to imagine we do the Spectrum and the Verizon, and then we're going to leave the Fender and the Edison for later. So that means it's going to make two separate forms, two separate check forms or bill forms, which are like check forms. And these forms are going to be decreasing the accounts payable, the other side going into uh, or decreasing the uh, check checking account <laughs> decrease the accounts payable decrease in the checking account now notice we're not going to be able to say see in the bill form what we paid for in terms of the account because because that's on the bill meaning the telephone company was paid in the bill the pay bill form is is going to is going to be paying down the vendor but not assigning the actual account let me show you what i mean if we go ahead and we could save and close save and print i'm going to save and close and it should generate those forms. If I go to the balance sheet then, and we say, let's run it, we could say, okay, checking account should be going down. So if I go into the checking account, we've got a special form now. It still says check, but the fact that it says it's a, pay, it's a bill payment means that I already know the other side is going to accounts payable. I could see it in the other account over here, but it's kind of redundant because I already know that because it's a bill payment form. If I go into it, then it's going to go into the bill payment form, but not with the, all the bills down below. It's only got the one bill related to this one transaction because two transactions were created when we entered this. And of course, if I want to know the actual account, you might say, I know the account that was impacted. It was Verizon. That means the telephone is the thing that we are actually paying for. But if I don't know the account because of the vendor, I would have to go to the actual bill, which is linked here nicely. So I could go to the bill and say, this is the account that was actually impacted. So I have to go to the actual bill to see the account that was impacted. Otherwise, in the bill payment form, I'm only going to see the vendor that was paid because the other side's going to accounts payable. Okay. So then also just realize that the, and then here's the other one, the second one that we made. Also, just, just realize it's kind of nice that they break out these separate transactions to different kinds of checks, but it's also kind of a pain because if I sort things and filter, you most commonly filter by type. So if I want to filter by decreases to the checking account, I would add a filter by transaction type. Instead of just being able to use one check though, a check form, I, I have to pick up the check form and then I have to pick up the... Uh, Pay, bill payment form so I'd have to say check I could say check again the bill payment form and so on uh, and so forth so that I get all the decreases that's the downside of having multiple transaction types which are basically just variants of checks I have to sort and note, note all those 
So there's pros and cons, but there's that. The other side, I'm going to exit out of this, get out of here. And then I'm going to go down to the AP accounts payable on the liability side. It's down to 4,008. And we could see the transaction in accounts payable like they will typically happen. Accounts payable goes up with bill forms. It goes down with the bill payments. You should be able to tick and tie these numbers out, seeing them increase and decrease. Unlike the cash account, which we know has a whole bunch of different types of transactions, only two transactions here in the AP accounts payable, bills increase, bill payment decrease, and so on. Let's go back. If I take a look at the subledge and run that one, we can see that we have two bill forms still in place. That ties out to the 4008, breaking it out by vendor, which is on the balance sheet, 4008. If I look at the internal documentation, opening up the hamburger, going into the good old vendor center or expenses center, we could see in the bills tab, here are the two bills unpaid. And here under the paid side are the paid items. If we go into the vendors, we can sort by the open bills. There's the open, two, two people still have the open bills. And we can also look at the past paid individuals, which will give us uh, possibly a, a little bit easier sorting over here to see what has been paid. If I go into Verizon, we have a nice audit trail here where we have the bill. And if I, if I click on it, we can go into the bill. So there's the bill. We see it's been paid clearly and we can link it to the payment, clicking on the payment if we want and we could see the payment that's connected to the bill. If on the other hand, I close this out and if I was to go into the payment, I could see the payment was clearly made for this bill. And if I wanted to see the account that was paid for, because I didn't realize it was the telephone company because I'm paying Verizon, I can go into it and see the account that was ultimately expensed, the telephone expense. All right, closing this back out. All right, I think that's it. I've been talking too long. Let's go to the balance sheet and then run it. This is where we stand at this point in time. Income statement, we'll run it. This is where we stand. And then balance sheet on top of the income statement, trustee trial balance, easiest report to kind of check your numbers. This is where we stand here. If your numbers tie out to this, great. If not, then try changing the date range. Might be a date issue. Uh, we have the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense, starting with the assets. Cash is an asset, accounts receivable, inventory, investments, payment to deposit, prepaid insurance, furniture, and fixture. Then the accumulated depreciation, contra asset related to the furniture and fixture is an asset, machinery and equipment. And those are the assets what we have. The other side of the coin, who has claim to those assets, either liabilities or third or equity. Liabilities include accounts payable, the visa company, the, the bank, the, uh, the government in terms of sales tax the bank in terms of the loans we took out, the government in terms of payroll tax, uh, unearned revenue for what we owe customers for prepayments and whatnot, and then the equity section, opening balance equity, uh, the owner's investment in representing our investment in the company, which would be similar to the capital stock in a corporation and the owner's equity representing or similar to the retained earnings for a corporation. And then the whole income statement being part of equity broken out in terms of revenue minus expenses uh, or credits minus debits, which will result in a net credit balance of net income, which will then roll into the owner's equity, similar to retained earnings if it was a corporation. QuickBooks doing that process on a yearly basis. So if we change the year 010125 to 010125, uh, we can see it happening. We can see it rolling in uh, to the owner's equity.